want to look at uh, the idea of economies of scale using these cur cost curves, but I'm going to start with just a quick distinction between average cost and marginal cost using these, uh, these curves that we've got. Uh, let's say, for example, that uh, we've got production of widgets at 100. And uh, I've drawn the, the line to show what they are. As you can see, the, uh, the average cost in this case is higher than the marginal cost, which means that producing one more widget, 101st widget, if you will, is going to be less than the average cost up to the point of producing 100. Necessarily, then, the average cost curve must be decreasing because the next widget you firm produces is going to be less costly than all the widgets up to that point. On the other hand, for example, we look at a situation like where they're producing 150 widgets, for example, in which case now you can see that the, the next widget they produce, the 151st widget, is greater than the average up to 150. In this case, necessarily, the average cost curve has to be rising or increasing. This is the idea that, for example, uh, if you take a course and your mark in that course is lower than your R score up to the other, all the other courses you've taken, well, necessarily it's going to bring your average down. If, on the other hand, you take one particular course and your mark is better than your average, then it's going to bring your overall average up. Same concept. Uh, you'll notice that there's a point C, for example, here, where the two lines cross. And at that point, the marginal cost must equal the average cost, which also means to say that the average cost is not changing. So the slope at this point is going to be zero. Now, with that distinction made, we can now look at the idea of uh, economies of scale. So uh, I'm going to look at two regions here. I'll start with region A. In region A, the average cost is decreasing. That means to say if we increase production, uh, along this area here, the average cost is going to be lower. We say there are economies of scale or increasing returns to scale. Now, there's different measures of this, different ways of looking at it. And when it gets more complicated, we've got different inputs. In this case, we've, we're not looking at any specific input. And sometimes the return, the returns to scope particularly gets complicated if a firm is producing more than one particular good. We're looking at, for example, here, widgets, one good. I'll ignore all these distinctions for the moment and just say we... When we're in region A, uh, uh, there's economies of scale. Another sense of this is bigger is better, because as the firm gets bigger, it can produce a good more cheaply or less at lower cost. A lot of people seem to think that this is always the case, and economists are a bit suspicious of this, because they suspect that as a firm gets bigger and bigger, or the technology gets more complex, and then costs, average costs start to rise. We'll take a look at this situation in the next case here. Let's call this region B over here. Well, now, in this case, if the firm starts to produce more, the average cost is increasing, which means it becomes more expensive to produce a particular good. Now, again, this is going to depend on technology. Uh, the curves I'm showing here happen to be based on any technology may be different, and we're going to look at this case later when we consider different market structures. Uh, whether what's reasonable. But as a first approximation, this is not a bad way of looking at it. This argument, too, the idea of diseconomies of scale or decreasing returns to scale, the idea there is small is beautiful in the sense that uh, there's an optimal size for a firm. Any larger and their average cost is increasing, any lower and they haven't exploited all the benefits of being a bit larger. So this means to say at point C, the term we use then is that there's constant economies of scale, or sometimes unit returns to scale. Uh, they're equal to one. Increasing doesn't change the average. Uh, at the, the, the way these curves are drawn, it implies that there's a particular point, but it could also be flat at that. So it depends on the technology. So you could have a situation where it's a, 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 an area in which the quantity produced remains constant. There's constant returns to scale. Uh, here we've got it. I put it as Q star as being the ideal size for the firm in the sense that it's got the lowest average cost to produce. Uh, at that point as well, the marginal cost will equal the average cost, and the average cost will be the lowest. Unit cost is the lowest.